My name is Candace Martin, and I'm here on behalf of the University of Maryland Writing Project and the Reginald F. Lewis Museum. Uh, we are here in Trap, Maryland, uh, learning about the history and legacy of Nathaniel Hopkins and the parade he created, the Nasus Day Emancipation Parade. I'll have everyone I'm sitting here with now introduce themselves, and we'll start at the end. I am Pastor Charles Albert Bell, Jr. I've been here for two years, and I'm also amazed at what has happened with Nathaniel Hopkins, and we are excited to share it with you. My name is Naomi Diane Thomas, and I am a member here at Scotch United Methodist Church and the historian for the church. Leo LeBrown, a member of Scotts, and I'm sitting in just as an assistant. All right, so I'll ask a few questions. Anyone can chime in. The first question is, who was Nathaniel Hopkins? And tell us about his parade. Nathaniel Hopkins was born back in the 1800s. He was a slave that lived in the trap area. And his parade, well, his parade started because he wanted to celebrate being free. And he along with uh, friends, decided to come together, once asking the town for permission, if they could hold a parade to celebrate the ideal that they are now free slaves. He, uh, once, one time before this had happened, he served in the um, Union Army during the Civil War. When he came back from serving, in the Union Army, that's when he came up with the ideal that he wanted to celebrate the ideal of being free. So he was a man of strength, and of courage, and of love for country and for his God. Awesome, thank you. What was the impact of the parade in this community and the surrounding towns and cities? So he. Um, he created a parade, but what was, what was the impact that that parade had on not just the area, but the people too? The impact on the uh, people that were in the area, it was a time of celebration mm. because they would all come together and they would have, um, the first thing was the parade itself, just marching and being able to march freely mm. and celebrate and dance along the way and. Uh, playing the flutes or either banging on the drums, just coming together to celebrate awesome. and knowing that they are free and that they could walk through the town and, and they are free to do so. Mm. And then the food was the next part of it after the parade because they would have all kinds of food that they would serve during that time period. Things that were in the area from the seafood to the uh, things that were on the farm, their vegetables and things that they had. It was a time of celebration and enjoyment. I was um, reading about, um, not only about the food and the celebrations, but that there were many church services during the day right. of the parade. <laughs> and I'm talking about praise and mm -hmm. prayer services mm -hmm. after services. Can you, any of you talk a little bit more about that? Well, <laughs> but, <laughs> The services were the gospel music. Mm. And back in that time, they used to call it the band, where they would come together and, and uh, they would just sing gospel music, praising their Lord. Uh, the, all the old hymns, the, uh, the hymns that they would sing as they were being in the fields and things that they would do, coming together and just praising the Lord and thanking God for their freedom. Mm. And as you remember, we're in the area which is known as Talbot County, where we have Frederick Douglass, and in Dorchester County is just up the road where we have Harriet Tudman. So you know that it was a lot of excitement there about the God and the, the stars and how the stars would lead her. You think about Nathaniel Hopkins and he was in the same area and the things that he was doing. And this is all what we would call the Eastern Shore for Eastern those years. visitors <laughs> that are not from Maryland. Mm -hmm, right. um, this is what this area is called, perfect. Um, still on the parade, and we talked a little bit about this um, before we actually sat down, is the vote. Mm -hmm. And when the 15th Amendment was passed, which gave African-American males the right to vote, 
how did that tie into the parade? Well, it tied into the parade because uh, the uh, political parties that were around in this area, they were the ones that would come and help and support Nathaniel Hopkins with the parade. You think of the uh, Republican Party, because that's Lincoln. Lincoln was the, the party of the Republicans. And so they would come and they would work along with him knowing that they could use, well, he always held the parade on a Saturday and the voting would take place on that Tuesday. So there were things that they would talk about and the, uh, those that were running for election would be in the parade themselves walking along mm. or in their carriages and they were, you know, soliciting the vote. And they were just almost guaranteed that, well, if they're coming to this parade, we're gonna have their vote <laughs> when we have this election. <laughs> Awesome. Um, my students, I've been teaching this in class, um, they all have been saying over and over again about knocking door to door. He knocked door to door. He knocked door to door. And uh, Nathaniel Hopkins, in order to bring and get spectators out to the parade and have everyone celebrate, he actually went door to door um, in not only trap, but in all the surrounding areas. They talked about, and you mentioned this in the back too, um, how they travel. He didn't, he, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was cars around then. Right. So <laughs> the traveling that it took and the time it took for him to build up anticipation for this celebrity, uh, this event. Yeah, mostly it was by foot traveling. And then if they had a buggy traveling, horse and carriage, horse and carriage mm -hmm. going that way also to go to the different locations within the uh, county. And if you think about the main street of Trap, the houses are so close together because this is the town part. And this section that we have this church in is the section that was known as the black section. But it was at first the Quakers that had the house, that the building that we're in right now was owned by the, the Friends Meeting House. And then they moved to Easton and they gave it to the African Americans that lived in the area. And this is what we have today is Scott's Church. Yeah. <laughs> well, that leads me into my next question. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the history of this church, which you actually said that it started out as a Quaker's meeting house? It was a Quaker's meeting house. And the Quakers decided they were going to move to Easton to a larger facility. And so they gave the church. It was deeded over to the African-Americans that lived within this community. And the land and everything. And Levi Scott was the first a pastor of the church and uh, they named it after him. Awesome. You mentioned that um, with this being on the Eastern Shore, not only, of course, do we have Nathaniel Hopkins, we have Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass. And with this being a Quakers meeting house, there could be a possibility that. I've always said it's always a possibility <laughs> that Harriet Tubman could have used this route to go to Denton <laughs> or to mm. go into Pennsylvania mm -mm. coming this way because she didn't use the same route every time using those stars and this was a Quaker meeting house and she could have stopped here at Scott's as one of her places that she could have you know laid over for a while and then moved on to the next area. Very rich history. <laughs> yeah. I've so, always said that. <laughs> how does Nathaniel Hopkins tie into this church? Nathaniel Hopkins uh, is this building that we have that we're in. He was one of the first trustees. I just want to read this because I think it's important. It says, our first pa pastor was a Reverend Joshua Brinkley. The first trustees were Moses Sherwood, John Camper, Spencer Stanley, John Stanton, and Nathaniel Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hopkins was a leader for the black people of Trap. He gave his service for the building of God's church and was the founder of the Emancipation Celebration Day known as NACES Day. And that's a part of our history that's written in our wow. history for the church. Mm -hmm. Awesome, very nice. Um, this church has taken a large role in preserving Nathaniel Hopkins' um, history as well as keeping the parade. The parade, for those of you who don't know, the parade has been going on for over 155 years. The parade that Nathaniel Hopkins started right here in Trap. Why is it important to this church, Scott's United Methodist Church, and this community to keep the parade alive and to keep his history alive? I think it keeps God alive, mm. knowing that God is a part of everything. Mm. And this was a strong religious area that we live in, and that God is leading us and guiding us every step of the way. And so one of his 
gifts that he gave us was Nathaniel Hopkins. Wow. And Nathaniel Hopkins is one that thought that it was fair that we should have a celebration to say that we're free. And then by being free that we are able to serve our God. Mm. True. The one to help us get where we are as far as we are today. Wow. It's also the important. Starter. It's also important to remember our history and know our history and to know how we got to where we are now. Mm -hmm. If we don't re teach our children what happened, then whatever ever's happened before, we're uh, apt to let it happen again. He's not known, but yet he was living during the same time as Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, yet we never hear of Nace Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Being from the lower eastern shore, I didn't know who he was until I got here, but the things that he did are just as important as what Frederick Douglass did and maybe uh, Tubman. But that part of history should be told to, uh, to our children. My first thought was, is what freedom actually looks like. Mm -hmm. Too many young people have been gifted uh, things that they didn't earn. Whereas Hopkins knew the value of freedom and he knew what slave was like. Once you are free, he wanted to share that with everyone. As a young child, you need to be able to understand what it's like to have to be caged in, mm -hmm. told what to do, and then to be set free and to just let your wings fly. And that's the example that I think this sets what it is truly like to be free. As a young person, knowing that you can go to a small town and this little small town came up with or has an, a gentleman that was named Nathaniel Hopkins that came up with the ideal of celebrating your freedom and just think about the area that you're in that's small but something big that happened this, there's no other place in the United States of America that actually celebrates Emancipation Day. Mm -hmm. It started here in this little town of Trap. And it was with this gentleman with his tall top hat, his sword and his sash, his wife or his aunt that was walking beside him, and then his children playing the band behind him with the instruments and knowing that they are free. Just to know the ideal that you're free. Wow. <laughs> I too think like the rest, that children today probably would think in their minds that they would love to have met this man just to see who he really was and what he really looked like. And they, some of them would think, oh, I would like to be like him. Mm -hmm. So I think they would find be quite excited to hear the story. Exactly. And to see the place where he lived maybe and all about this church and everything that he did. That would be my thought on Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is the extra credit essay question for my students. <laughs> I'm a language arts teacher, so I teach seventh grade. And their extra credit essay question is exactly what you just said. And I'm going to read it because if there are any other responses, please chime in. And it, the extra credit question goes, Nathaniel Hopkins was born around 1831 to 1900. He grew up and lived on the Eastern Shore. Harriet Tubman was born 1820 and died 1913. And mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass, born around 1817, died 1895. They also grew up and lived on the Eastern Shore. According to their birth and death dates, all of these historic figures lived at the same time. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Harriet Tubman mm -hmm. and Frederick Douglass are widely recognized and little is known about Nathaniel Hopkins? Mm -hmm. Little is known about Nathaniel Hopkins is because he was mainly 
for the area of just little old Trap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think about the area that we're in. It's just in between East A community leader focused on one this little, community. Mm -hmm. One little area. Because Frederick Douglass is in the Eastern St. Michael's area. That, that's Talbot County still, but that was the center of East. Uh, Eastern is the center mm -hmm. of Talbot County. And whereas in Dorchester County, you have Harriet Tudman. But Trap is just a little, little area in between, and that's where Nathaniel Hopkins. God has placed everyone in a certain spot, and it just so happens that he placed Nathaniel Hopkins here in the little town of Trap. Awesome. We've talked about Nathaniel Hopkins, him being in the Army, him um, helping to uh, uh, start this church, him um, starting the parade, of course, but there's a, another um, area he tapped into, we talked about um, behind, um, before we came out here, and that is Money Make. Can you tell us about Money Make? Now he the lived, real estate or the road? He, or? Well, he lived down in the area of uh, Money Make, and there was no road that was down in that area. That, okay. Yeah, there was no road down in that area during, uh, like we were saying with the parades and everything, the Republicans would come and they would also if you would get my, me the number of votes that I need, then I'll get you a road through Money Make, or you want a school down in that area, we'll get that school down in that area, but I need these votes, and, and this is the kind of things that was going on also during the parade. So the, the, everything that he did, as we stated, or as you stated. Was to help his people. Was to help his to people. To build them, to bring them up. Mm -hmm. In any way possible, whether that was building a road, starting a parade, uh, I don't know if we mentioned the schools, but he yeah, helped to he helped to do uh, the start. The man asked the school yeah. was down there in Money Make, which I guess is the first school he did. And he was one of the trustees mm -hmm. on the board. Trustees on the board, wow. or they had asked him to be a trustee on the board, and I think did he, I'm not sure in history it said that he made it, but he was asked to be a part of the trustees. Gotcha. Well, very nice. Well, this is all enriching. I don't know if there's anything else before we in uh, that you would like to add to anything of the conversation today? The only thing I think of that I could add, I'm thinking about the food that was going on. They said they would roast a whole pig, and I'm thinking about <laughs> it, that they would go back in, in that period of time because- This the, is for the parade. They had no supermarkets mm -hmm. to go and shop at. That's, these things came from their fields and from their farms, so they would bring a whole pig to roast. Wow. And I can remember on the nicest days that we've had here, we would have a stove outside and we would be frying oysters. <laughs> well, that's what they said they did. Everything was outside Everything then. Everything was All outside. All this cooking, they said, that wherever you turn, wood stoves, they had. Yeah, along the street mm -hmm. here, you would have the wood stoves cooking. All I can remember is a little girl, the foot long hot dog. <laughs> the hot dog was long, and I kept asking, when are we going to have this again? And it only would be during NASA's day. It had these hot dogs that were so huge. What <laughs> is the parade route? Where does it start? Where does it end? It started down by, I guess it's by Miss Murray Chase's yes. out over Maple Avenue. Mm -hmm. And then it would come through the main part of town and, and it end up right in front of the church. Okay. And this is where the, the grandstand would be in front of the church. And the park down the street? Okay. The park down the street came later in, probably in the 19s. Yeah, the park wasn't there then. No, the park wasn't there. And they named it after him. It's a okay. park that's there. Very nice. And the park is park. fairly new. Yeah. It's maybe it's since we've had our new county councilmen, we so. have two that were black on the maybe county council. Maybe it's been a, about eight years or so. Yeah. Wow, very Might good. Not been that long. And the other thing I wanted to uh, point out of uh, from our conversation in the back is um, how African Americans during uh, Nathaniel Hopkins' time voted primarily Republican in this area, <laughs> and you said that to this day it's still known as a Republican area. <laughs> It's a Republican <laughs> area. Most of our parents were Republicans, and I know my parents were. Back, yeah. Yeah, but uh, my, <coughs> and all of us are Democrats. Mm. Every one of us are mostly Democrats, but uh, when yeah, they have an election, the Republicans win the area, but thank God for Baltimore City. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying <laughs> that, but then we do have a Democrat in there. And, and you know, uh, it's always the best person that wins, because God's also in hand of it. I don't no matter what Amen. it is, whatever happens, God's in the hand of it. Exactly. And mm. is the parade 
still scheduled to be around election time or the date has changed? The date has changed several times during years in past because uh, they were talking about the weather and they didn't want to be in the snow and everything else. This year we're going back to November the 4th and if it's a rain date, we're asking for November the 18th. Okay. 4th and 18th. 4th and 18th. Writing that down now. I will be here. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully I can bring my students here, oh, too. Fantastic. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be beautiful. Oh. We're inviting the uh, governor. I think we have a letter that went out to him. That hopefully he will come. This, this is, would be wonderful mm -hmm. if he would come this yeah. year. I love the idea of everything that we've discussed today, of Nathaniel Hopkins being a community leader. That's how you sort of tie it in a nutshell of everything that he accomplished. And that's who our current governor, what he's all about. He's about leading the community. And so I'm, I'm right with you. It's on whose shoulders that you stand on. Um, it's all about belief and faith. Um, and I strongly believe that if the two could ever just sit down and mm -hmm. meet, I could mm -hmm. just see Nathaniel Hopkins smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I think well, I could see Westmoreland, number one, thanking him for opening the door. Mm. And then I can see the thing of Hopkins him, thanking him for taking advantage of what he had offered. Mm -hmm. They talk about standing on someone's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> standing on his shoulders that he started at first. And now here I am the governor. Mm -hmm. And we thank one person, God. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he probably thinks that uh, if it hadn't been for you, it's great encouragement. I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's really overwhelmed to think, you know, times have changed and this has happened to me. And he's uh, feel probably like he's been chosen. Mm. Could I add one more? Another thing that I really, like I said, I'm new to this area, but it's the, the thought of when you think of Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and Nathaniel Hopkins. Mm -hmm. We're here walking the same land that they walk. Mm -hmm. We're under the same stars mm -hmm. that they were under and guided by. And we fish the same waters <laughs> that they walk through to get to freedom. Right. And I think when you put all that together, it really makes a tremendous difference of how you look at this and what God can do when, he's, when you are lead, 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 led by God to get to your next destination. And every piece of the puzzle has to come together in order for it to work. Mm -hmm. And they all work to a better uh, place where we now have a Governor Westmoreland to look up to. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a, I love it when the plan comes together. And I think it is coming together. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. This has been enriching. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to come talk about this legendary figure. And I hope everyone who is watching, have they have learned a lot about Nathaniel Hopkins and the parade that happens every single year mm -hmm. here in Trap, Maryland. Thank you. Thank you.